Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Cascading Style Sheets tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you absolutely every single way you can style fonts using Cascading Style Sheets. First, before I continue, I wanted to bring something up. Tasmon caught an error that I made. Whenever I listed all of the different block elements in HTML or XHTML, I forgot to include list items. So that's from the previous tutorial. If you didn't watch that, most definitely check that out. And two other things brought up by you guys is that I did not go over the pre-tag in my HTML tutorial. In the pre-tag, what it allows you to do is to display text that needs specific numbers of spaces. And also, I'm going to show you how to do inline style statements like this. And at the same time, whenever you're using the font family styling, if you have any spaces, you want to make sure that you surround those with single quotes, as I'm doing right here. And I'm going to be doing a lot of inline styling. Again, you can always define, for example, a paragraph tag, just as we did in the previous tutorial, right like this. But I'm going to do all this inline so that it, my job is a little bit easier. Just understand that you would normally do this inside of an external CSS file. And now I'll demonstrate exactly how the pre-tag works. Spaces are important. And then we'll close that off. And if we save that and jump over here, you can see that the spacing that I used in between these words is kept exactly as I defined it. So that's the pre-tag, and also that is how to properly use the font family tag. Remember, always put single quotes around any fonts that have any spaces inside. Okay, so now on to every single way of styling fonts in Cascading Style Sheets. Here again, I'm gonna use the pre-tag to define this guy. And the font tag is the shorthand way to define a font in just one line. And the different things that you would style would be font style, font variant, and I'm going to go over all of these individually. Font weight, font size, line, height. Yes, there really are this many different ways of styling these guys. And then finally, font family. Okay, so those are all the different things that you style all inside of just the font style. So you can do that all in one tag. And here I'll give you a demonstration of exactly how to do that. So I'll just have font style, and then I'll follow that with a font tag. And then I could say italic, bold, 1.5 EM, Arial, Helvetica, sans, serif. All inside of one guy. And if we jump over here, you can see that it's styled all that. It's both italic as well as it is bold. And we're using Arial as our default font and the different sizing that we use inside of there. So that is the font tag. Now I'm going to show you some other ones that are a little bit more interesting. And here I'm actually going to use a list. So of course, I got to put the UL tags here and that UL tag there. And here I'm going to specifically cover font family and how you would just that would be very similar to the previous tutorial except I'm going to show you every single one of these guys and you can see right there there's Andel Mono I defined that commonly there are 12 different fonts that are available on Macs PCs and Unix systems and I'm going to show you all of them right like this so we have Andel Mono and then we have Arial Arial Black Comic Sans which a lot of people hate for some reason Courier Courier New Georgia, Impact, Sans, Serif, which is on every browser. Serif, of course, Trebuchet MS, and Verdania. Save that and jump over here. You can see all the different fonts that are available inside of almost every single browser right here on your screen. And here I'm going to get rid of these first six, and I'm going to show you all the different ways to style using the font size tag. I'm just going to quickly grab this, put font size in there, and you can style on a percentage basis. Then there's the smaller tag, extra small, medium, which is also the default, extra large, and extra, extra large. And then to actually get these guys to work, I'm just going to come in here and type in 150%, type in smaller, extra small. Again, medium is the default, but if you wanted to define it, that's how you do that. And you can see all the different ways of using the font size tag with cascading style sheets. Then you have font weight. And again, I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier by replacing size with weight. And there's actually 13 of these guys. Boom. And then here, you have normal, bold, bolder, lighter. And then you have 100, 
through 900. So I edited everything there. And then if we reload, you can see all the different ways of changing font weights inside of Cascading Style Sheets. Font style is a very strange guy. Basically, you have normal, which means that there's nothing, and then you have italic. If you wanted it to be normal, you wouldn't do anything. If you wanted it to be italic, you would put italic inside of there. So rather than change everything, just look up here, and you can see that that is now italic. Now you know every single way to use the font style tag. Font variant also only has one option, and that option is small caps. And if I put small caps in there and spell variant properly, you can now see that small caps, small capital letters are being used inside of there. Now you know every single font variant tool available. And now to demonstrate line height. So I'm just going to come in here, type in height. And for height, you define percentages. So I'm just going to do a couple random percentages. I'm going to do 20%. I'm going to do 50%, 100%, 140, 180, and 220. And then I'm going to have to also change this to line, not font height, line height, point, and you can see how they moved around on the different lines. And you can also mess around with a letter spacing. So I'm just going to come in here and replace line height with letter spacing. And this is just used to define the distance between all of the different letters. And you can see all the different ways that we're editing the distance between text. And it actually stretches off to the other side of the screen. That's why they bounce down to here. You can also change the distance between words using exactly the same stuff here. So let's just save it, jump over here, and you can see the distance between the words is slowly increasing as I increase this number right here. Then you have text align, and you've no doubt seen this before. If we want to align left, center, right, or justify. And you can see that it did just that. Left, center, right, and justified. Then you have text decoration, which is kind of neat. And here we can decide that we want this underlined, overlined, put a line through it, or make it blink. And blink works on some browsers, and obviously it doesn't work on the Chrome browser that we have here on the screen. And then we have text indent. Of course, it defines the distance that you indent the line, right like that. Then you have text transform. There's actually not many more of these guys. And with transform, you actually only have three options, force a capitalization, force uppercase or lowercase. Doink! And you can see that it did that, just like that. And then you have vertical align. And to show you exactly how this works, I'm actually going to style a italic tag here. Because if I put these on separate lines, it wouldn't make any sense. There's actually eight of these guys. And I'm just going to put the word random inside of here. Close off that tag. Copy. All right, so we got baseline. We got sub. We got super top, text top, bottom text bottom and middle, right like that. And you can see how they randomly move around vertically on the line based off of what you define inside of here. Yes, I am covering every single one of these guys, but there's only two left, if you can believe that, and they are color and background color. And here I'm gonna jump back to actually using lists here to make this nice and simple. And there's mainly 16 color attributes that you can assign to text. Actually, there's an infinite a variety of them. And if you want to see a complete list of how to use these in regards to hexadecimal codes, you go to en.wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash web colors. If you go there, you're going to see countless numbers of different colors that are available to you. Okay, so we're going to come in here and we are going to make ourselves some color changes. And the colors available to you are aqua, black obviously, which is the default, Blue, fuchsia, gray, green, lime, maroon, navy, olive, purple, red, silver, teal, white, which we're obviously not going to be able to see, the yellow, that no orange. Let's just put orange in there, see what happens. Boink, and there is an orange, of course. And you can see here that you do not see white, and you can also see here you're, of course, styling the bulleted item and not just the text. And for the final guy that we're going to put inside of here, it is background color. And just so you know, if you also wanted to style using hexadecimal codes, this is what they would look like. Like this is a hexadecimal code for a color of red. Just put the hash symbol. And because I looked up on Wikipedia what this is, that's what a hexadecimal code looks like. And you can see that there is a version of red that shows up. I think this is actually pink. So you can see that there's an infinite variety of different colors that are available to you. And if I want to change the background color, I'm going to use all of these same colors right here on the screen, except what I'm going to do is replace color with background color. Boink. 
So there is a whole different number of different ways you can style text. That's pretty much every single way you can style text using cascading style sheets. Up next, I'm going to get into positioning and how to move things around in a background, and then you will know everything there is to know about cascading style sheets. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.